Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Queen of Shade. It's the Ski Boys. We love you. Salutations, Queen of Shade here, coming to you in my natural form to speak to you about some things. Community, we are all shocked, stunned, in disbelief, and grieving the loss of our brother, DeAndre Cottrell, a member, a CEO, and a founding member of the Ski Boys. The Ski Boys, if you don't know, I'm just going to say it. The Ski Boys are one of the most successful dance groups, acts, to ever come out of the gay community. Being all black, um, I thought Julian was Latin, but anyway, being black and brown and, you know, to really start to do things that just no one else had done. Um, their flair, their costumes, their choreography, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they went from DeAndre and D'Eric to the trio. Now, what we have to understand is you guys are writing a lot of questions because this one means a lot to me. I'm following it. I need you to understand something first. I have all the information that you do. Understand that. Everything that I'm posting is a matter of public record that I've gotten from the police websites and different news groups that have covered this story. So I'm just looking at the same thing that you are and making my speculations. I'm going to just say that. And the reason why I say speculations is because of this. I'm a medium. That's one of the gifts that I have. And I can communicate with other people on the other side. However, what I learn, I cannot use in a court of law. It's no proof, no proof. So I'm just following a story like you and putting two and two together. And you guys sent me questions. So I'm gonna start to answer your questions here and fill in a couple of blanks for you guys because you guys are asking me because I'm hot and heavy posting about this. I can't post about much of nothing else right now. I'm angry and outraged and you know. So here we go. About three and a half years ago, I had the privilege of sitting down for an interview kind of conversation with Derek and DeAndre. Um, at that mark, they were about at the 10 year mark, somewhere around there in their relationship. And, you know, that conversation was very eye opening. It was love both ways. And um, I learned their story. This is why it's very special to me. I learned their story. They told me, you know, how they met and how, you know, DeAndre moved to the college where D'Eric was to kind of get to know him and to be with him and et cetera, et cetera. And it was difficult, you know, up front. Because if you look at D'Eric, he doesn't exactly make your gaydars go off. So they told me about how challenging it was at first. But they also told me about the love that they shared and the love that they had. And unfortunately, something happened with my recording um, equipment. And you never know. You got to have backups and backups and backups. And I lost the interview and was not able to post it for the world to witness and see. So it is only a matter of record between me and now D'Eric, who can substantiate that we spoke. I continue to keep a close relationship with them and especially DeAndre. Why? Because DeAndre is a Libra. I am a Libra. So I saw his ambition. I saw his drive. I saw the same things in him that I see in myself. Mirror reflection. So I, st I kept up with them and it was amazing. And the group started to climb. And then Julian Taylor Morris was added. And I welcomed the ad. And I learned things about the relationship expanding. And that was that. Now, here we go your questions, because I'm just dealing with the same information you have. So here we go with those. Okay, I'm back. So when this story broke, um, what happened was I actually was looking at D'Eric's stories because nothing was posted to his page. Nothing was posted to Julian's page about what was going on. Um, nothing was posted to the official Ski Boys page of what was going on. 
I happen to be going through stories because I monitor my boys. I keep up with them. And the ski boys are some of my favorites. So I I go into his stories and I see that he's been searching not only for DeAndre, but for Julian. I have that screenshot as well for two days. He had been looking for them. He said he was in Birmingham and that uh, he was looking with the family for two days trying to find De'Eric. I'm not De'Eric. DeAndre. It's a lot of D's in this. (laughs) DeAndre and Julian. And that he was waiting for the canine units to um, lend assistance. And then we all saw what happened. Now, what I did was I immediately said emergency. Because when I realized he was missing, I used my platform to get everybody's attention. And get everybody's attention, I did. The story broke and it was, you know, people started asking questions and then Gay Magazine covered it. And they did such a beautiful job disseminating the information. We all, I'm trying to let you know, we all have the same information. Me being a medium and being able to talk to people on the other side will not do in court, okay? Not unless he tell me where such and such is buried. And I'm not asking all of that. I'm too devastated right now. So the first question I asked that I asked when the story broke and I was talking to my inner circle was, why wasn't Derek with Julian and DeAndre? I just found it odd. I'm just going to say what I, what I said. I find it odd and I found it odd that he wasn't with them going to visit family, especially when he, at this point now, has been the primary lover in DeAndre's life for 14 years. So that was my first, that was my first flag. I said, well, why isn't he with him? Okay. Second flag was if Derek stayed behind and DeAndre and Julian went to Birmingham, Alabama to visit family and they had a dog and they all got to know the dog and got to know the symptoms of the dog and how the dog would act. Why wasn't the dog left home with Derek? That that was just my personal question. Then all this stuff broke. Now, so first question was, so the first question asked to me by a lot of people were, um, was, do you think there were drugs involved? And this is the thing. And everybody kept saying, oh, because they're dancers and, you know, dancers, they get ketamine and all these other things. And this is that and a third. And this is that and the other. Listen, DeAndre's death was ruled a homicide. It was ruled a wrongful death. So the coroner decided that if there was anything present that caused the death of DeAndre, it wasn't something he did himself. That's how you get wrongful death. That's how you get homicide. So let that go. Um, What was the other one? There's a lot. Okay. Now my sister, Angelica Cottrell, later on comes out and I posted that too. And she said it was bizarre for D'Eric to not be with DeAndre visiting the family. She said that DeAndre was always busy because he is. He was a you know dancer, successful. Then he had bachelor's and master's degree, working on a PhD. You know this man was busy in the summertime. They were traveling everywhere. We we saw the ski boys traveling, and performing, and you know et cetera et cetera. We know how that goes. But um, she later said that it was it was weird and and that this holiday was different because Derek wasn't with them. He has his reasons. We don't know. Innocent until proven guilty. We don't know. So there are more questions, more questions. Okay, some of them are crazy. Um, Some of them are crazy. Okay, I want to say this because some of them look like they're the same. So I want to say this. Wrongful death. I'm going to say it again. Wrongful death. (laughs) I'm going to say it a third time. Wrongful death. That means the coroner examined the body and whatever was present was determined that DeAndre didn't cause himself. Just hang on to that as this story continues to unfold because I'm on it. I want you to know I'm on it. I'm looking at everything. And I've got a genius brain. You all know how my brain works. You've watched me do this for 10 years. I'm not playing with this. But we cannot, we cannot, um, 
claim guilty, guilty, guilty without evidence. Now, what bothered me, and you guys have been seeing my post because I'm, I'm really posting a lot. What bothered me was we were informed through eyewitnesses on the scene and things like that about Julian Taylor and how Julian saw DeAndre hop over the pat off the patio, the second floor patio, bounce, and then hop a fence. That's and we're back. And so when everyone went to look, he didn't help. And they, you know, we, you can read all the information that the sister provided. She was there. It's her brother, et cetera, et cetera. What struck me was, she said, Angelica Cottrell said, my children were outside popping fireworks. DeAndre was in her presence at that point. He said, sis, I'm going to go in the house and check on the dog. That's what he said. I'm going to go in the house and check on the dog. He never came back. Julian saw him hop off the second floor patio in the backyard, guys. In the backyard. They were all in families in the front popping fireworks with the kids. In the backyard. Bounce, which is so odd to say. This is not Tigger and Winnie the Pooh, but anyway. That's, I got to, you know. And then hop a fence. He saw all that. And then when they went to look, he didn't look. Speculation. I can't, I can't really go into it. Just watch me because I can write it down better than I'm saying it. Because I don't want to say it and then. But I want you to know my wheels. The wheels in my head have been turning since I, since I looked at this loony old man. Okay. Walt Disney. But um, yeah, the wheels in my head are turning. But what we have to understand is the coroner said something was wrong here. This is a homicide. Hang on to that. So that negates your questions about drugs and all this other stuff. Hang on to the fact that it was a homicide. And I'm going to continue to follow this case. And I'll bring you what they release and what I find and even what I speculate later. But after we get the facts, okay? I love all of you. Please pray for the family, the loved ones of DeAndre Cottrell and me because he meant so much to me. Um, his light, his energy, they all did. They all did. The entire group. Um, and this is very sad and very hard on me. I must admit that I can't sleep. Right now, I keep waking up crying and, and angry and it's traumatizing. And I believe that it's traumatizing a lot of us out there. So let's all hang in there, do our breathing exercises, take our anxiety medication and try to get through this until we know the reasons why, how and what. We need a time of RIP. We need a cause of RIP. And we need to know why it was ruled a wrongful RIP. So just hang in there with me. I know I'm posting a lot, but I love these people. I love these men. But these men mean a lot more to me. The ski boys, they were in my heart. And DeAndre will always be in my heart. Eric will always be in my heart. Julian will always be in my heart. But if it is found that there was misfortune and they were the culprits or justice must be served. And that's just how I look at it. You know, that's why, you know, a lot of people, why are you posting Julian on a page? Because he's not missing. They thought he was missing. Because I care about all the ski boys. As you can see, I'm sweating my ass off in here. It's hot. Um, I care about all the ski boys. But if I find out that they had something to do with it, <laughs> you will see the crown turn. You know, as they, I'm the queen of shades. So you will see the crown turn quickly. Okay? I love all of you. Let's keep following this story. Um, it's sad. It's so sad and it's shocking to the community. And um, this one, I truly believe But when this is over, this is going to shock everybody because these, as the, keep, the police keep saying, it's suspicious, suspicious, suspicious. It's gonna shock us all. And I just, we have to brace ourselves for that because it's gonna shock us all. I love you all. Thank you for following me, even though I'm permanently shadow banned for posting black and Latin men the way that I do, but I don't care because I still work like I'm not shadow banned permanently, mind you. But um, I'll keep bringing you this story and I love all of you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting the family. Thank you for listening to my voice about this very important matter because this is a wrongful death. 
All right, I'm out of here. I'm burning up. I'm out of here. And I'm back for a quick second because I have to say something. Innocent people don't hide. Completely, totally innocent people don't hide. I am praying to the cosmos that we find Julian Taylor Morris. Because this is the thing. He knows what happened. And we need him to tell us his knowings so that we can connect the dots that seem so bizarre and suspicious. Okay? So I'm praying right now, Lord, reveal... Julian Taylor, you can't run forever. I don't care if you were a Marine or not. You can't run forever. And the gay community, you know how we are, baby. We see you. We on you. No. Innocent until proven guilty. But the cops now say he's wanted and that he has stopped communicating with them. So he needs to materialize. So let's all pray for that and do our little spirit fingers for him to materialize because we need what he has to say because we need to know if this is a plot if the plot thickens and i already know it does you guys it does so brace yourselves because this is going to shock you all i already know this make sure that you follow the queen of shade on all social media platforms stay up to date with social media posts podcast episodes merchandise drops and mentoring specials Serious booking inquiries use the email provided.